Hello, dear listeners. You are welcome to the platform today. And uh, today in this lesson, we want to look at one of the non-African poems recommended by West African Examination Council. So in the lesson today, we want to look at a brief uh, background of the poets and also of the poem. John Donne lived from 1571 till 1631 and was a contemporary of William Shakespeare. He was a renowned priest of the Church of England and uh, that is Anglican communion as known in Nigeria. And uh, in fact, he was the dean of the Cathedral Church of St. Paul in London until his death. And uh, also, this particular poem, The Good Morrow, was written while John Donne was a still student at Lincoln's Inn, where he occupied himself with studying history, theology, and poetry. It was also during this time that John Donne started writing poetry. And The Good Morrow is one of his first poems. Now to the poem itself. John Donne created the poem at a time when England was undergoing various intellectual, political, social, and literary transformations. England had just gone through the climax of the Renaissance period in the 16th century under the rule of Queen Elizabeth I. Her reign ushered in a new phase in the evolution of the arts and literature, explorations to the Americas, increased trade, increased sea travel, increased wealth, relative peace, and the emergence of a prosperous middle class in the English society. This culminated into a delightful atmosphere that provided enough serenity of mind for the people to appreciate literature, especially poetry. So, the poet's experiences as an active observer of the various events shaping his immediate society in England and the whole of Europe served as the creative impetus for this poetic rendition. And in this poem, which attests to Don's artistic ingenuity, Don takes himself as is and uh, his loved one out of all these epochal events and occurrences into a blissful world of tranquility where he talks about love, love that is powerful, enchanting and timeless, in a very creative manner and in perfect synchronization, don't integrate ideas about love which was a recurring picture of Elizabethan poetry with the religious agitations and political conflicts of the 16th century. For the poetic persona and its loved one, poetry becomes a means of escape into an idyllic world of experience and existence where the significant or landmark political and economic event shaping the world turn into distant, fleeting memories. It is on this serene poetic canvas that John Donne paints the world and the words contained in the good moral. Not only that, John Donne was a renowned metaphysical poet and of course, he was the greatest of all metaphysical poets. Primarily, metaphysical poetry deals with the teaching of universal wisdom, something that is seen throughout the world as 
the right thing to do or the right things for mankind. The wisdom is usually taught to mankind using arguments known as either metaphysical conceit or ratiocinations. This is worked out as poetry lines. John Donne's The Good Morrow is clearly a typical metaphysical poem at ordinary foregrounding appreciation, that is, when we look at it ordinarily on neutral ground, the poem is advancing conditions to be in place before a solemnized marriage, which is naturally contracted by mankind like a dream without knowing of its future, which can indeed be actualized into a good moral or a happy married life. That is when two people get married. None of them know what comes tomorrow. People will only celebrate with them and wish them happy married life. And also when we look at this particular poem at sociological appreciation, the poem can be extended to have uh, underscored the art or practical psyche with which the ruled and the rulers, that is the people in government and the citizens, as partners in progress vis-a-vis states, I mean smooth running contract that is good moral. That is this poem, the good moral can also be seen as the people in government and the citizens they have been, uh, that have been ruled, the contracts, the joining together of what they have to bring about peaceful coexistence and the smooth running of the society can also be seen as the good moral that the poet is talking about. In other words, living in good societal order is a binding contract between the citizens in the society and the personages holding those people's vested relationship power over them. That is, a good moral is between, or let me say it's a contract signed between those people in power, the politicians, and also the citizens. So whatever comes out of the rulership, uh, the rulership as pertaining the uh, peaceful coexistence in the society is 